Hello everybody and welcome to the second episode of We Should Read Book Club. Uh, as always, oh no. <laughs> Hannibal! We are reading Hannibal. I'm so glad you are watching and let's get right down to it. In last week I said John Briggs. I meant John Brigham. It was just really late and I guess I just was like, well, close enough. <laughs> so I just want to make that um, clarification. All right. This episode will consist of a chapter 64 through, you'll see in the title because I'll decide when it's a good time to stop. Where we're starting off is awkward place to start off. I'll figure out how to space these better. But Carlo moves the pigs. So now the pigs are coming to Muskrat Farm. And I also have a notation here. Ew, why am I reading this? So just to give you an idea of what's going through my head as I'm apparently reading this. Chapter 65, we learned that both Margot and Mason went to Dr. Lecter. Maybe that was mentioned before. I had a wide gap from when I read the beginning of this book to the end, end, and I finished it right like five minutes ago. I just learned that, but we might have learned it before. And Margot is also talking to Barney about, uh, about killing Mason. So I'm sorry, someone starts talking to me about killing someone. I'm going to get a little antsy that I'm a loose end. <laughs> Don't let anyone talk to you about murder. It's just, it's just good sense. In chapter 66, the pigs are at Muskrat Farm. And Carlo's like their father. Like Carlo is very attached to these pigs. Like, okay. Like he feels like he, I don't know. It's really weird. These people and their man-eating swine, I swear to God. So we're gonna spend a few minutes on chapter 67, actually. actually I, I, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I have a desk, I have a desk. All right, chapter 67, let's get right down to it. Krenler, oh, 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 Paul Krenler. He would apparently feel bad about breaking a man because he has a family to support. Sorry, I forgot uh, Starling did this for fun and gets no pay. You know, God forbid she has to support herself. So then there was a weird moment where Paul Krenler actually like backhand compliments Starling where he says her homemaking skills of a woman, uh, Clarice would definitely find Hannibal, which is why she needs to get out of there. Like, I, I couldn't, I'm like, first of all, homemaking skills of a woman. Do you see the mess behind me? That tape has been up there for two years. I'm a woman. Do not lump all women as great homemakers because if I get married and my partner is going to expect like a, a made home, he, they, ha they have another thing coming. Also, he points out that when women do get promotions, they mostly earn it on their back. I, I can't even. First of all, how many women have slept with Paul Krenler for a promotion? Because I'm thinking like zero. Because I'm sorry, no matter how bad you want that job, nothing's worth that. It just isn't. Nuh uh. Oh, and he also points out how crippling a woman's career is a lot easier than damaging a man's career. I, I, I agree with that. Oh my God, me and Paul Krenler agree with that, but for vastly different reasons, or kind of the same ones, except we approach them from two different things. He's thinking this is a positive, and I'm thinking it as a negative because, haha, oh, it is. It's no. I mean, it's it's no secret out there that women have a lot more pressure and scrutiny on them. I mean, <laughs> how many po male politicians come back from all these sex scandals and they're a, a year or two later they can wash it right under the rug, whereas the women in those scandals are a woman kind of, if a woman does something a lot less worse than that in the public eye, she will get slammed and the public will not forget, like, and, and the media will not let her forget what she did. Look at Hillary Clinton right now, who's gearing up for a presidential run, and everyone's like, oh, is she gonna be able to handle being a grandmother and being the president? Can she be, is a grandmother or president? Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, how many kids and grandkids did Mitt Romney have? Yeah, did we ever hear him? Uh, did we ever hear anything about him being a grandfather? Uh, no, unless it was in a positive light, like all the kids were having like the Romney, remember with like the t-shirts with each of the letters on it and they like went 
in the thing except they spelt Romney wrong and it was like our money or something. Okay, I digress. Oh, and then I don't I don't want to be like explicit or gross, but he talks about grudge screwing her while he's picking his nose. Like is that face. Okay. Sterling's independent attitude and smart mouth helped Krenler block her from good assignments. Okay. <laughs> independent attitude means leadership is able to delegate. Uh, basically, good qualities if a man is displaying them. Smart mouth, quick wit, which again, a good thing, and men are praised and worshipped for their quick wit and cleverness, yet she has a smart mouth and an independent attitude. I know, chapter 67, I just could not stop writing stuff. Oh, and so in conclusion, Krenler is a homophobic, misogynistic, classist, Cle Krenler's gross, and I say classist because when he talks about Evelda Drumko's child like the baby he's like oh another one the public will have to pay for <laughs> i know he literally like wants to make me rip my hair out but then i think of krenler and i don't want to touch my head anymore foreshadowing chapter 68 lector gets some guy's bones in texas i was kind of confused by this i'm always wondering if like i miss something and i'm like so thomas harris writing sometimes it's very hard for me to follow because i have to look i'm like did i forget something did i miss something i have to read it three times to make sure like i'm getting what you're getting and like did you did you know something before me like so when he puts in these like little things uh, it does confuse me okay so now we are on part four which is notable occasions on the calendar of dread love the writing chapter 69 is sterling's last day at quantigo although she doesn't realize that yet i don't like this part in chapter 70 starling gets served with the summons to appear at the hearing chapter 71 is just starling and crawford walking to the hearing and finding out the press has been tipped off about it let's spend some a few minutes on chapter 72 so the three people in the room uh krenler oh four people krenler noonan Purcell and Montenegro in the corner. The U.S. Attorney General, Clarice's like old supervisor, like head supervisor, and Noonan someone. I don't know. And they wind up, they kick Crawford out. And then when they're basically attacking her character and her character's totally been tarnished. Starling, while she's handing her stuff, she calls Krenler out on being in cahoots with Verger. And like she, she calls it, like she sees it. And it's, it's amazing. I love her. Montenegro, the Italian dip diplomat, believes in Starling and is offering help, like offering his business card. And he doesn't like Krenler because he's like, oh, no, I don't want to shake your hand, sir. Director Noonan. Ah, Noonan's the director. Apparently doesn't mind getting rid of Starling because women have an emotional element that uh, doesn't fit at the bureau. I'm sorry, just having that opinion, doesn't that give you an emotional element that doesn't fit you in with the bureau? Like, this whole thing, like, how about Krenler's emotional element of wanting so much money that he's twisted and crooked a thousand ways out? How about the emotional element of these men who can't handle a woman also having the same job as them? How about that emotion? But, like, that, that's not real emotion. Only emotion is the women. And then I had issue with this. Noonan had a week once when he couldn't help from looking at an attractive stenographer and he had to get rid of her before she caused some trouble. What kind of trouble? A uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault charge? Like, what kind of trouble was she gonna cause? And it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like he has unstable emotions. But okay, as a stenographer, stenography. Do you know how freaking hard I'm working for my certification? And do you know when I get the job, you know working in a federal building, that's a great job. Those are hard jobs to get. Do you know how pissed I would be if I landed a great job in DC where I eventually want to be like a million years in the future and I get fired because some guy can't stop looking at me? Oh my god. This hit me in bones that I shouldn't. This hit me in my stenographer bones and made me so mad, so mad that this woman, the stenographer, 
is now being punished because some guy popped the tent in his pants and she needs to be fired before she starts trouble. In chapter 73, we get the teacup falling reference that was heavily referenced in Hannibal season two, the show. Oh, and the teacup reference is actually a reference to A Brief History in Time by Stephen Hawking. So, fun fact. And we also learn that Hannibal sees Starling and Misha as two teacups. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah, we know. In chapter 74, Lecter's at the hospital. And, um, I'm sorry, he endured watching The Price is Right. I don't care if you're a crazy murdering psychopath, a high-functioning sociopath, an average human being with no neurotic elements. The Price is Right is gold, and we do not take The Price is Right's name in vain. Okay, Dr. Lecter? I think this is where my opinion of him started to, um, you know, boop. So Lecter's there to raid the hospital for drugs, for brain surgery drugs. Like, okay, I saw the clip of the movie. No, I didn't see a clip. I really just saw screenshots of the movie with the guy who, I won't say who he is because, spoilers, with his head off. So, like, when he talks about the cranial, um, the cranial saw a few chapters ago, I'm like, ooh, and then the brain surgery drugs. I'm like, ooh, I'm just waiting for it to happen. And I'm like, ooh, ooh. Sorry, I just read it like 15 minutes ago. As a package from the funeral home comes to Dr. Lecter's, one of his like, you know, places, and he drives away in a, no, he doesn't drive away in the drag yard. He references that the drag Jaguar would have been nice to have, which means Clarice had found a purchase that he had made, because Clarice is awesome. Why'd you hurt my Clarice Thomas Harris? Why'd you hurt her? Chapter 75, Krendler is notified about the Lecter wine purchase and runs, do you not have a car? Uh, to Mason's house to tell him. What a puppy. What a little misogynistic, homophobic puppy. What a puppy. He's like that puppy that is a mean puppy. You ever meet a mean puppy? Yet yeah, you didn't because mean puppies don't exist. Because Paul Krendler is a horrible person. Don't ask. That made sense in my head when I said it. In chapter 76, Mason, Krendler, Cordell, and Margot see Lecter on the surveillance tape, and Carlo wants revenge for Matteo. Oh, Carlo, you pig loving man. Oh, Carlo. A Krendler put a tracker on Starling's van so they can follow her. Ooh. Now, section five was a pound of flesh. Ew. I literally have that written down. Ew. So in chapter 77, Ardelia Mapp and other FBI women are coming over for holiday dinner to support Starling. Uh, Starling's not too happy about it, but she's like, all right, whatever. And Starling's shopping and someone steals her shopping cart. Rude. Absolutely 100% rude. Do not steal people's shopping carts and do not steal their coupons. That's just cruel. Lecter is leaving a gift in her car, although he doesn't make it that far because all of a sudden Clarice hears a rifle and sees a man being dragged out by her car into a van. She doesn't know who it is yet. And she's like, so she sees these people in the Lincoln and she's like, I need to use your cell phone on the FBI. And they're like, uh, no, and drive away. You know, Clarice makes a few calls and she then she finds the wine and understood what just happened. Oh, and then I'm like, we all deserve a thoughtful friend like Hannibal Lecter buying a $350 wine. For our birthdays. In chapter 78, Starling reports the kidnapping to Purcell, Purs Purcell, Purcell, and Starling gets held up by the Arlington police because they like will not stop with the questions and she's like, you gotta pursue and they're like, what's your name? And she's like, <sighs> chapter 79, Mason tells Krendler he told the authorities that Starling's been harassing him and Krendler has to just hold off the US attorney. So now all of Starling's pleas for help, oh, are like not pleased for help you know are now kind of getting swept under the rug because she's been harassing mason but she hasn't really oy vey oy vey so we're gonna spend a few minutes on chapter 80. so Purcell says he will keep starling updated and in the loop on the big stuff but it has to be on the hus hush hush but here are some thoughts from clary starling but she could not abide the thought of dr lecter tortured to death she shied from it as she had from the slaughter of the lambs and the horses so long ago okay now i know a lot of people ship clannibal and i finished the book and i can tell you a million 
100% I do not. Now, I have nothing against people's ships. You can ship whoever you want. Any critique I make of Clarice and Hannibal as a pairing or whatever are not directed towards the shippers. It's just my opinion, how I see it. I have utmost respect for whoever you ship, okay? I just want to make that very clear because I'm about to get down. It's not that to me. Obviously, these are all my insights. But I don't see it as like an, an attraction to him. You know, if someone I knew, whether I liked them or not, was going to be tortured to death, I would do as much as I could to stop it because I'm a good person and because Clarice is a good person. And we couldn't, shouldn't construe this for like feelings. Also, almost as ugly as the act itself was the fact that Mason would do this with the tact, with the tacit agreement of men sworn to upload the law. It is the way of the world. So, in you know, this line could have easily been uh, people sworn to upheld the law, but it wasn't. It was men, and I think in the narrative of this book, it especially says something that the word was men, because then she goes on to say. Uh, the world will not be this way within the reach of my arm. So I think in that case, she's referring to herself as the woman, basically uh, saying that, you know, this cruel world of men, I will not let this happen as long, I, as long as I have an arm to reach and that I can stop this. And I think there, that, that little section of of text was extremely extremely important and really gives us a real insight to the core of who Starling is, her views and how she sees herself and how she sees the outside world. So Starling decks, Starling decks out in John Brigham's stuff and heads out to Muskrat Farm. Chapter 81, Mason, you are no Madame Curie. Mason wonders what he'll do after Lecter is dead. And you know what? You shouldn't count your chickens before they hatch. I know you're a meat farmer, but from a farm farmer with chickens and not swine, don't count chickens before they hatch, okay? How about you focus on killing Lecter before you focus on what you're going to do after you kill Lecter? Not that I want you to do either of those things, I'm just saying. On 82, Lecter wakes up and is attached to a single tree. I... I I'm guessing it's almost like a cross type thing or like a thing. Eh? I'm like kind of picturing like Da Vinci's like the man thing with the thing. That's kind of what I'm picturing the way they described it. And is greeted by Mason on a screen. And Lecter antagonizes Carlo and gets his eye vaulted. Ew. Margot doesn't want to stay for dinner and I can't blame you because... Ew, okay? This whole book is freaking sick. And I know, like, I volunteered to read it, but ew. In chapter 83, Margot confides her troubles to Lecter, and Lecter offers to murder Mason for her, and is like, or if you want to do it, rip out my hair, and you know, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then Lecter antagonizes and manipulates her more to the point where she actually does rip out his hair and then go on her way so we can see you know where her mind is right now in chapter 84 starling arrives and is ta um, and takes the service road very smart clarice starling very smart in chapter 85 cordell attempts to bribe lecter with painkillers and death drugs basically saying like oh you won't feel the pigs eating your feet and legs and you won't feel them eating your face tomorrow but lecter refuses I don't even know what to do with that. I really don't. Like, are you... <sighs> did he think he was going to get rescued or did he just want to put on a brave face? Or, um, I'm going to hit this in a few seconds, but I'll come, I'll hit it now. Um, the pigs actually are, are, um, intimidated by Lecter. Like, they see him as an equal. So, had uh, Clarice not saved the day, which I'm about to get to, um, had she not saved, oh, I can get to it now. So, 86 is like Clarice saving the day. Had Clarice not saved the day, would the pigs have even eaten Dr. Lecter in the first place? I, I think that's really interesting to think about because I don't think they would have, to be quite honest with you. I think even strapped to a table, you know, he just gives them a glimpse of those maroon eyes and 
they they wouldn't have they wouldn't have eaten him. I'm, I don't think they would have. I honestly don't. But as I said, Starling saves the day. She kills Johnny Mowgli. Carlo and Piero are handcuffed. Basically, everything happens. Oh, wait. Um, in kind of a funny way, and the casual con conversation between Clarice and Hannibal is kind of like very off kilter with what's going on. Like, it's very like, boom, 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 ba -da -da -da. hey, how are you? Good evening. <laughs> it, it made me laugh in like a weird way. So the pigs are attacking the dead body of Johnny Mowgli, and then Carlo and Piero could not get away in time and wind up being pig dinner. Which, you know, Carlo, that must have hurt to have your children eat you. Cruz Starling is shot with two, like, tranquilizer darts. Um, Hannibal removes as much as the poison as he can and drives away in her Mustang, which she told him was there. Basically, everything happens. The, the, you know, she saves Hannibal Lecter and then he takes her. But we're only going to do a few more chapters because I'm going to get to the end, which is really weird. So Margo and Tomoso. Uh, check for living people. Uh, Tomoso was Piero's brother. I know this isn't like in depth, but I'm assuming you already read it, so you're good. And um, she makes sure the money changes hands so that, you know, the swords don't come after her, which I think was pretty smart. Um, she ta and she also takes a cattle prod and a hammer. What you gonna do with them? I don't know. We'll see. Two my surprise Tomoso lives and he thinks the pigs worship Lecter and quite honestly I do too <laughs> it's it's weird Margo kills Cordell no love lost there Margo kills Mason with an eel she sticks an eel in his mouth and the eel eats his tongue ah oh, why why would you do well you know mason ridge is a horrible person but like she must have been planning that for like years you know every time she saw that eel she's probably like she knows she knows what she's gonna do so margo takes uh mason's sperm and is on her way oh she wants to use the sperm to impregnate her partner judy so they can have a verger heir because the vergers um the father wrote it so that only a male heir would inherit the money hence why mason had such a hold over margo and she plants the hair from lecter um successfully framing him which is what he wanted so that's where we're going to end this episode this is actually going to go up in two parts so you can watch part two pretty much right now where i'll go over the end of the book and how freaking weird and to me honestly this part of the book add where add where like our delia map and the others find Clarice in Hannibal's home and take her home and that's where the book ends for me but in the video in part two that you can watch now it's an very weird and in my opinion lackluster but we will still cover it so i if you're not going to watch that i just want to thank you for watching we should read book club the next book we're going to read is child 44 which i'm super excited about i've read this i know it's tried and true and uh, i really can't wait but make sure please watch part two and make sure you leave your suggestions down in the comments this is new so i'm structuring it but we can we can move stuff around uh just let me know and you know what would you like to see do you have book suggestions and i will see you in like right now if you want to if for another we should read book club but if not i will see you next week with the first episode of Child 44. So excited. I hope you have a great week. Bye.